There's a big reason a lot of people don't know what Hanford is. Because at the beginning, it was a secret. It was a major component of the super secret Manhattan Project. And that, of course, was well before your time, before my time, when there was a race to build the world's first nuclear bomb. Uh, and, you know, this isn't like the healthcare issue or something like this. This is an urgent environmental crisis. And Republicans, Democrats alike um, recognize that. So it's, it's not really a partisan issue at all. It's really an environmental crisis and it's a safety risk. You may be asking yourself why we chose such a complex topic, a topic many are scared to dig deeper into. We wanted to see firsthand what this toxic nuclear site is all about. To do so, we needed to travel three hours east. The date is June 7th, 1943. Construction has begun at the B reactor. The project objective was the building of a plant for the production of plutonium in the shortest possible time and in a sufficient amount to provide for military requirements. It was now time for our tour. The date is May 20th, 2017. We loaded a big white bus and were sent 45 minutes east to the B reactor. The land was barren and the road had no end. We saw barbed wire and gates surrounding every step. In fact, Hanford is the most contaminated site in the United States and the Western Hemisphere really. This is insane. This is definitely not what I expected because there's there's aisles of just like history of artifacts and um, as you can see, like it's I did not expect this. Really, right here, there's this machine where if you put your hands and feet, or you put your hands inside here and your feet here, it'll show you if your hands are radioactive or not. That is insane that people actually had to do that. So, so far I'd say it's pretty overwhelming. There's lots of things to see. Um, gas masks, signs like these. It's dark and dingy. I don't know, it's kind of scary. Okay, so right here is the train that uh, took the plutonium from the B reactor over here to um, the next facility, which is behind us, you can't see it. Um, but this train is actually highly contaminated as we were told in our bus ride over, but we can get about 10 feet away from it and they, that uh, is what uh, they'll let us do. They said that they will not clean this as it takes too much effort, but um, it is highly contaminated. Okay, so <clears throat> there's some ugly, ugly history at Hanford. Uh, just think about it. Back when they're in that race to build a nuclear bomb, and then the arms race, right, to build the nuclear warheads. It appears the last thing they were thinking about was in the environment and human health. Like a trillion gallons of nuclear waste was just dumped. So there's already been nuclear waste purposefully dumped into the ground, straight out into the Columbia River. All that's bad. But what's left behind now is waste that's way worse. Uh, some wastes, like what we saw decades ago, doesn't live as long. But the things that are in those underground tanks, many of which are leaking now, really have the worst of the worst. This is hot, radioactive, chemically contaminated waste. 
because when they were making plutonium at Hanford, they had to throw this cocktail of chemicals in these vats to extract the plutonium. Bottom line, if you can think of a nasty chemical, it's at Hanford. The radi radioactive material has to decay away at its own rate, and in some cases that's millions of years. Uh, in some cases it's hundreds of thousands or hundreds of years. So each radionuclide has its own decay chain, and we're going to be concentrating that at Hanford in a small area and hoping to stabilize that in a way that won't leak out into the environment into the future and affect future generations. We kept hearing the awful effects of Hanford and the nuclear problems it has caused. We spoke to a retired Hanford worker. We needed to see what he thought. Uh, I think Hanford's at the, at the forefront of a lot of things that, that have to do with the deal with the environment. Okay. And, uh... I'm looking forward to what the future is going to be like for here. Uh, you know, for, for, for everyone, and it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, uh, I don't know how else to explain it, but just that history goes on, and I have a lot of confidence in the generations to come to bring in their ideas, you know, uh, scientifically, environmentally, and all that type of thing, and just kind of like, because you do, you, 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 you're going to build upon what's already, already been here, and uh, it's only going to get better, I, I, and I really, really believe that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. We were so puzzled. Who were we to believe? Was the environment even at harm? We saw two contradicting sides to this issue, but what kept nagging at our minds was the relevancy of this problem. Does it even affect us? Is this even recent? I fear that it's going to get worse before it gets better. We just, you know, a few weeks ago had a collapse of a tunnel at the Hanford site called the Purex Tunnel. Um, the radiation levels inside that tunnel are lethal. We, you couldn't be in that tunnel even for, you know, a minute without getting a, a lethal dose of radioactivity. Once it hits the water or goes into the air, uh, then it spreads and it becomes like a Fukushima or a Chernobyl where it just keeps spreading and spreading. And that's, that's a true environmental disaster is when we're drinking it and we're eating it and we're breathing it. The reality spoke for itself. We knew this was a current issue. However, this large government problem was still in front of us. Could we even help? What could we do? Well, you can let your congressional leaders know that you care about it. They're the ones in charge of the Department of Energy. And you can let them know that you believe what investigative reporters, not only me, but others around the country, a few others, have been, have reported, what advocacy groups like Hanford Challenge have reported, what the Attorney General has found in their own, you're not gonna take it anymore. You're not gonna take deception. You're not going to take lying. These are your tax dollars. This is your state. And the Fed, big bad feds came up here and left a big fat mess. And now we're sitting around having to deal with the fallout. And really, we're, we're in a situation right now where the only thing that really works anymore is, well, there are two things. One is litigation. And the second is mass movement, right? Getting a lot of people to weigh in with their elected representatives whether or not they want to hear it and, and make noise about it. And that's kind of deterred bad things from happening even, you know, and uh, not just the Trump administration, the Obama administration, other administrations, right? When there's enough people that raise their voices in a collective manner, then it kind of makes it hard uh, to ignore uh, what needs to be done. The solution is really up to us. It's up to you. 
This is the most toxic environment in the entire Western Hemisphere, and it is in your backyard. It affects you. You can either sit back and pray someone might step in and be your voice, but nothing will come of that. It takes a nation of citizens like us and like you to show your concern and be the voice that needs to happen. This is a problem for you and the environment, and there needs to be a change. This is the American Chernobyl.